It's one of the biggest weekends for the city of Las Vegas, and for one local hotel, Super Bowl weekend is the time for a new beginning. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. Good afternoon and welcome to News 3. There's a pretty big event going on this weekend. You may have heard of it. It's called the Super Bowl. That's uh -huh. right. The game, of course, is not here in Las Vegas, but the Valley is definitely cashing in. And you know, Scott, many people prefer coming to Las Vegas than actually going to the host city for the Super Bowl. It's that big here because of the sports books and everything else that Las Vegas has to offer. They should all score big this weekend, but the stakes are even higher for at least one resort, the Regent in Summerlin. Kirk off joins us live from there right now. And Kurt, the property just received a $20 million boost to help keep it afloat. That's right, and they really have to approach this thing from a positive viewpoint. They have to shout the positive from the rooftops, if you will. Talk about having a lot on your plate. Overcoming tremendous financial difficulties. <laughs> Shuffling priorities. Enter Super Bowl weekend. Now that a $20 million security blanket is in place, this is the time to change course. Really, it will allow us to maintain our momentum. We've got tremendous momentum going right now. The Super Bowl party is aimed primarily at the locals. They are the ones who will make or break the region. The problem is we've never done a very good job of letting them know that. So uh, our job lately has been to let the locals know that we have outstanding value here. Going after the local market with a big Super Bowl party is one thing, but keep in mind, there is competition. It's definitely a challenge, but I think what we're starting to see, and from the Sun Coast, our neighbors, we're starting to see more people feeding into this area because they want to see the Sun Coast, and they'll also come to see the region. They'll see both properties. According to resort number crunchers, cash flow is 25 to 30 percent ahead of projections. But is the region proof a luxury hotel casino can't make it this far off of the strip? It's been a learning experience for many. You, you don't know step one, two, and three. You're kind of feeling your way along. How do you develop the business and how do you uh, uh, position and posture your business? Super Bowl Sunday, the video screens will be everywhere. High dollar memorabilia, things like autographed jerseys and helmets will be given away as prizes. Keeping score will have a whole new meaning around here come this Sunday. And we're back live now. Of course, a quick monumental turnaround would be ideal, but you know what? I sense a more realistic outlook from among the resort's top brass. If they can just capture the imagination of those who live in this neck of the woods, they will be well on their way. Kurt Goff reporting live from the Regent in Summerlin. Right back to you. All right, Kurt. Thanks a lot. Looks pretty good. This weekend's combination of the Super Bowl and Chinese New Year could generate mega revenues for the Las Vegas casinos. That's because they draw two kinds of customers. The Super Bowl traditional traditionally lures domestic gamblers, while the Chinese holiday brings in Asian high rollers. In the next half hour, we'll take a look at some of the big Super Bowl parties taking place around town and what kind of food will be served. 13 murders in just 26 days. Compare that to a total of 95 for the entire year last year. And nearly half of this year's murders have come just in the last six days. The latest happened yesterday in the desert near Lake Mead Boulevard, just east of Saddle Mountain. A couple walking their dog stumbled across the body last night of a man who had been shot several times. Then early yesterday morning, the body of another man who was shot to death was found in a back alley near Bonanza and Bruce. Neighbors had called police the night before after hearing an argument and gunshots, but police did not find anything at the time. Then another shooting at an apartment Apartment complex Wednesday night on East Rochelle near Maryland Parkway that left another man dead in the parking lot. Tuesday night, the driver of a car ran a red light at the intersection of Smoke Ranch and Torrey Pines and crashed into a wall. When police arrived, they discovered the driver had been shot before the accident. Earlier in the day, a three-week-old baby was found dead inside an apartment on Twain. The child's father has now been arrested on charges of murder by child abuse. And finally, last Saturday morning, a gang shooting at Washington and Robin Street left a 15-year-old teenager girl dead. Three teens have been arrested for that murder as well. Ten people were killed during the entire month of January last year. And right now, we are on pace for 180 murders this year, almost double last year's mm. total. Well, child pornography is a subject that can turn most people's stomach. But today, one Valley man is behind bars, accused of using the Internet to access child pornography. The Las Vegas Regional Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force says that this man, Timothy O'Neill, faces a federal indictment.
indictment. Metro narcotics officers were performing a search warrant at his apartment when they found 79 images of child porn downloaded off the internet. Everything is clear on I-15 right now, but early this morning, the Highway Patrol had to shut down a section of I-15 after a drunk driver caused a chain reaction car crash, and then he just took off. This all happened near the Sahara on-ramp on I-15. NHP says the driver of a red SUV rear-ended this car on I-15. That car slammed into the white Chevrolet you see. The driver of the SUV then just took off. He was caught and arrested at Lake Mead Boulevard and US-95 a short time later. One woman was taken to UMC where she was treated for injuries and released. No one else was hurt. I-15 was opened a short time later after the area was cleared. And Scott, it's been almost a year since six Valley teenagers were killed by a runaway van along I-15. Now the murder trial for the woman behind the wheel is set to go. Jessica Williams is accused of running over and killing the six while under the influence of drugs. Jury selection in the case will begin Monday afternoon. Williams faces charges of involuntary manslaughter, reckless driving and DUI. The trial is expected to last two weeks and News 3 will be there every step of the way to bring you the latest information. Will the second time be a charm? Folks down in Henderson are getting another chance to vote on a property tax hike to pay for police, firefighters and a new police training center. Voters narrowly rejected a similar measure in November. It would have added $84 to the tax bill of a $100,000 home and paid for 236 new public safety officers. A good education is not cheap, and students were devastated when they thought they lost their money after their school went bankrupt. You may remember this scene, yeah, at the Computer Learning Center Monday. Angry students showing up to a closed campus. The school closed its doors when its parent company was unable to pay millions of dollars in fines to the Department of Education. But there is a happy ending. There's a new owner, a new name, and bounced paychecks will be paid taking place and actually they will be here Sunday uh, with anybody's check that was not uh, credited to their accounts. Uh, they'll have those in hand that we can in good faith hand them to the employees as they walk back in. The school will keep the same curriculum, but its new name will be Stevens Henniger College and classes will resume next week. The difference between taking a red eye flight or a midday flight is more than just lost sleep. It's often hundreds of dollars, but a little competition may be bringing those sky high prices down to earth. Anquinette Moon shows us more on one airline in particular that is making it easier and cheaper to catch a daytime flight. America West flies 12,000 people into Las Vegas every day. Now McCarran Airport's second busiest airline is about to get even busier by adding eight more daytime flights. The more flights, the better. Terry Samba runs Ace Travel and Tours. Departing what date? Where customers call nonstop. Sometimes over 100 calls daily. If they're looking for a bargain, she books a red eye. Miami to Las Vegas. But customers know that cheaper price will cost them some convenience. The price as usual are a little bit lower. Um, but again, after the daytime flights, they are much more convenient. More convenient and some believe it'll make McCarran less congested. I'm pretty sure it'll alleviate the, the congestion at the airports if they do improve and get a few more flights going through. Wonderful for the travelers so that they can get to where they need to go a lot faster. You know, less delay. I think it's a good idea. But not everyone is nodding their head in agreement. Nationally, America West ranks high in customer complaints. And as David Berenson waits to catch a flight that's been delayed for almost five hours, he wonders if adding more flights would only add to more problems. They can add all they want. I mean, I'm not, I, I just feel if you, you can't add until you get your, your problems corrected. And Quinette Moon, News 3. America West is spacing the new flights throughout the morning, afternoon, and early evening. The changes will take effect sometime in April. You've heard about the stockpile of weapons the Texas 7 stole during their month-long prison escape. Well, now we're going to show it to you. Here it is. Some of it. The weapons range from small handguns to rifles. All were taken in a robbery at an Irving, Texas sporting goods store where a police officer was killed on Christmas Eve. At a news conference in Woodland Park, Colorado, the uh, FBI thanked state and local law enforcement officers for their efforts in the capture of the escapees. With the exception of the one escapee who killed himself, the remaining six will be headed back to Texas to face federal murder charges. Authorities blamed lack security for their escape since they had no help 
breaking out of prison. This next story is a perfect example of why you do not try to run away from police. Three people were killed early this morning in downtown Prescott, Arizona, when their car was hit by a car, another car being chased by police. It all started when an officer in a convenience store parking lot tried to arrest a man who was driving an SUV that had been reported as stolen. Witnesses say that driver hit the officer with his vehicle as he drove off, but the officer still somehow managed to shoot the driver as he was driving toward the interstate, and that's when the SUV collided with another car at an intersection, killing three people. Meantime, six American tourists are among 24 people who were killed in a plane crash in Venezuela. Witnesses say the Arutica Airlines plane tried to turn back for an emergency landing shortly after takeoff last night, but was unable to reach the airport. You can see the wreckage here. It went down near a hotel and burst into flames. No one survived the crash. Three people on the ground were injured. Investigators still have no clues as to why the plane went down. The death toll is rising this noon after a powerful earthquake jolts the country of India. This morning, 7.9 quake was centered between India and Pakistan, and at this hour, 866 people are confirmed dead, but workers fear many more people are buried in the rubble. The quake rocked buildings from Pakistan to Nepal to Bangladesh, and there are also reports of several mine cave-ins, train derailments, broken water pipes, and downed power and phone lines. The quake hit as many cities were holding Republic Day celebrations, which marks the day India became a republic in 1950. And here back in the States, a minor quake shook Northeast Ohio last night. Witnesses say dishes fell from shelves and basement walls cracked during the brief tremors. No one suffered any serious injuries. Experts say the quake, which registered 4.2, could cause minor structural damage to area buildings. You saw a little bit right there. Scientists at the National Earthquake Information Center say preliminary reports indicate the epicenter was located near the center of Lake Erie. Ohio has suffered 120 minor earthquakes in the past 200 years. Wow, and a lot of people forget that Las Vegas, rather Nevada, right is here. the third most active state when it comes to earthquakes. Of course, the biggest well, one or the most recent one things. just over the border in October of uh, 99. But yeah, active state for earthquakes. Yeah, the weekend is upon us. It is. Wondering about the weather. Super Bowl weather. Of course, everybody will be indoors for that. But nonetheless, everybody wants to go out maybe at halftime. Johnny, what does it look <laughs> like? Well, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, the jury is out there in terms of the weather forecast. We could actually see a few isolated thunderstorms, but there are showers, rain, and wind definitely headed in our direction. And there is a snow advisory for our local mountains above 4,500 feet. So snow is going to get very close to the valley floor over the next several hours. Right now outside, it is mostly cloudy. Temperature reading is uh, at 49 degrees, 34 percent humidity. The winds calm now. Barometer is falling at 29.89 inches of mercury. So uh, another Pacific storm bearing down on southern Nevada. It will not affect, of course, folks that are going to be indoors enjoying the Super Bowl. However, this could be a banner weekend to go up and spend some time on the slopes as more snow is on the way for our local mountains. We'll have your complete forecast and a very, very special edition of the Fredericks Fact coming up. Sue, Scott. All right, John, a historic day up at the Capitol. The nation's first African-American is sworn in as the Secretary of State. Watch as Colin Powell Aye. takes the oath of office. Aye. And as President Bush and his staff take up residence at the White House and Capitol, you get a few more surprises in the form of vandalism. We'll have details on that coming up next on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. Today at 4. I'm Kendall Tent. We've been watching Rick and Sandy Borba as they try to fulfill their dream of having children. Today, we're going to have an update as Sandy makes her last trip to the fertility clinic. That's on News 3 at 4. Get the weather forecast when you want it, 24 hours a day. Just visit kvbc.com and click the Weather Center 3 button. We're setting the pace in cyberspace. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at noon. Welcome back, everyone. President Bush watched as his Secretary of State was sworn in. He said Colin Powell is once again answering America's call. In an Oval Office ceremony, Powell took the oath as the nation's newest Secretary of State, promising to do his best as Bush's foreign policy Military point man. Machines. I think we have enormous opportunities ahead of us. There will also be challenges and there will also be dangers. But I look forward to playing my part, Mr. President, as you structure the foreign policy of the American people and take that foreign policy to the world. 
Later today, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is scheduled for an Oval Office swearing in. And what originally started out as a bad prank has turned into a nasty case of vandalism. Today, the Bush administration is asking its staffers to report anything unusual in the aftermath of their inauguration. Problems apparently went deeper than just the missing W's on their keyboards. Andrea Mitchell takes a closer look. The transition of power marred, say, Bush White House officials by college pranks and even outright vandalism by members of the departing Clinton team. The president understands that tra transitions can be times of difficulty and strong emotion. Some of it just plain silly, like a message on an answering machine that says, this is Al Gore's office. Due to a constitutional crisis, I'll be out for the next four years. But sources say some of it is serious. Phone lines cut, drawers filled with glue, door locks jimmied so that arriving Bush staff got locked inside their new offices. Obscene messages left behind on copying machine paper. If there's anything close to vandalism, that is absolutely inexcusable. Why so much bitterness? Clinton officials say emotions were high because of the way the election was decided. But they say overall the Clinton team offered full cooperation to the Bushes. What's unfortunate uh, here is that uh, some, uh, some, someone's idea of fun uh, is obscuring what was a very good transition. One of the easier fixes, an office supply company is donating 500 W's to replace the W's taken off White House computer keyboards by departing Clinton staff. Man, the country's in trouble. We can't use that W. And the Air Force will replace glasses and hand towels taken by passengers traveling with the Clintons on their last ride home. The Bush White House says it is cataloging the damage, but is not launching a full-scale investigation and has no plans to charge anyone with destruction of government property. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. In the past, pranks like this have happened between administrations, but longtime Washington insiders say these are some of the worst acts they've seen. Well, of course, Sunday, the big Super Bowl, and a lot of people getting excited for the parties, mm -hmm. maybe at their home that they're hosting or going somewhere else, but that could be a chaotic situation or it could be a crowd-pleasing affair. Remember, the way to a football fan's heart is typically through the stomach. Yeah, I've heard that. And have we got some great munchy ideas for you. The chef from the Riviera is here to help you tame the wild Super Bowl hunger. Don't let anybody fool you, kids. It's all about the food around here. And the Frederick's Fact up next here with your forecast on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. pregame show and so will you the xfl outlaw lounge pregame show your up close look inside the xfl news threes mitch roberts digs deeper into the warriors the wounds and the women watch it saturday february 3rd at 4 30 on channel 3 little suspect out there do you think it's a little a little gloomy. Okay. Well, John Fredericks is here. He's he'll talk about spell it out. Right. Just one of the usual suspects here in the studio, and uh, the cloud cover certainly is beginning to take over. Sue and Scott. Uh, good afternoon from our Fitzgerald's camera. No longer the Fitz 2000 or 2001 for that matter. It's just our sweet Fitz. 49 degrees, 34 percent humidity. Winds are calm. Barometer falling and uh, continues to drop like a rock as this big storm system moves closer and closer. Snow is beginning to fall up in our local mountains. We'll take a look at our Channel 3 Doppler in just a moment. Let me get you up to date with some other numbers around the valley. Officially 49, it is 30 degrees with light snow beginning to fall. We've got a snow advisory above 4,500 feet. 45 at Franny's with light rain falling over the hump and Pahrump. The winds are beginning to pick up. 53 Henderson, 40 at Boulder City, 52 right now at the Air Force Base. So, showers developing throughout the afternoon. They're going to hang around all the way through the evening and could hang around, folks, through tomorrow. And even on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, when really the forecast kind of becomes secondary, we could have some isolated thunderstorms. It's not going to get much warmer, maybe a couple more degrees. That's it. 56 yesterday, 59 is a normal. 
Best part about all of this is our air quality is good and it should stay that way. And we are going to get some measurable precip. Not expecting any flooding rainfall, just some scattered showers and occasionally some rain. 501s when the sun sets, don't expect to see it. It'll get up tomorrow morning at 646 and uh, the jury is out as whether or not we'll see any sun tomorrow. There you've seen the last couple of frames, a little band of showers. This is this is light to moderate stuff, but once again, we are expecting accumulations in our local mountains. Could be upwards of maybe six to ten inches of snowfall. This is wonderful. We've already had over a foot this week up at the Las Vegas Ski and Snowboard Resort, and uh, the conditions are wonderful. But it was we always tell you before you head up there to ski or snowboard, always call first. Make sure that you know if they need lunch or something, you can pack a lunch for them and you know help out the folks. That, no, check the road conditions, please. Snow is beginning to move through the uh, Midwest over in the Ohio Valley. Uh, once again, not significant amounts. The big story is this big weather maker out west. Right now, 51 in Los Angeles, 67 in Miami, 49 in Atlanta, 36 degrees in the Big Apple, 72 right now in Houston. In fact, it's uh, really nice uh, down in the uh, heart of Dixie. In fact, the forecast high for Houston was only 69, 70 in Miami, beautiful there, windy across the plains, just a mess out west with snow on the high elevations, rain anywhere from California over to Nevada, moving into Utah, and once again, some light snow across the Midwest, North Northeast, beautiful 38, the afternoon high in the Big Apple. All right, time for you to win something. We want you to win. I said this was a special edition of Frederick's Effect. Every year, the RIV packs them in to the tune of almost 3,000 people for their Super Bowl party alone. 3,000 people. Costs 115 bucks just to get in the door. I got two tickets for you and a guest to go to the Riviera Super Bowl party. It might be, is it the biggest one in town? It's got to be. Yeah, it is. It's the biggest one in town. I got two tickets for you and a guest to the uh, Riviera Super Bowl party, $115 each. Uh, Gail Sayers is going to be there. Roman Gabriel, Ben Davidson going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun, folks. So uh, this is your chance to go. You got to tell me, though, what southern state's flag shows a woman trampling a man? This is a true story. If you're from there, you know. What southern state's flag shows a woman trampling a man? Don't let the southern part fool you. A lot of folks don't think about that in terms of that state. 657-3425, if you have the first correct answer, you and a guest are going to be spending a fun-filled day over at the Riviera at their big-time Super Bowl party with almost 3,000 other guests. A lot of fun, $115 a ticket. And I got two of them for you with your correct answer. We'll have your weekend forecast coming up in the next half hour. Sue, Scott. And that was Roman Gabriel, not Peter Gabriel, right? That would be Roman Gabriel. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. If you have Did been I waiting... say Peter? No, you said okay. Roman. Okay, all right. Just making sure, because it would be nice to have both, right? Yeah. If you have been waiting to see Jerry Lewis here in Las Vegas, you may have to wait a little bit longer. The comedian is recovering from surgery. We'll tell you how the procedure is finally, he says, giving him relief after decades of pain. <laughs> it's the thrill of victory. It's the pain and the sweat. And it's nothing but net. News 3's Operation Basketball. Covering more high school hoops, both girls and boys. Every Friday on News 3 at 6 and 11, catch the action. As News 3's Mitch Roberts puts you on the floor of all your favorite high school games. Don't miss Operation Basketball. Brought to you by the Las Vegas Outlaws. For tickets, call 24-BLITZ. Comedian Jerry Lewis is resting up following back surgery. The good news, the 74-year-old funny man is no longer in pain for the first time in 17 years of back trouble. The bad news, he's had to cancel this week's performances at the Orleans. The longtime Vegas performer had disc surgery in Houston about two weeks ago. The longtime entertainer and uh, champion for the Muscular Dystrophy Association, of course, lives right here in Vegas. Lewis's next scheduled performance is March 22nd. Last summer, Jerry Lewis signed a 20-year contract to perform at the Orleans 20 nights each year. We've talked about this several times. Some of the uh, hottest television stars are in town this week. We've seen Alex Trebek, Regis Philbin. Now, two other favorites that kind of work as a team. Not Penn and Teller, Siegfried and Roy, they're already here. Not Donnie and Marie. How about Pat and Vanna? A couple that just can't seem to get away from work. Yeah. If you lose on the Wheel of Fortune machines, it's not our fault. If you win, you can credit us if you like. The Wheel of Fortune crew, Pat Sajak and Vanna White, hit Las Vegas this week. The pair, uh, they're in town for a television producer's convention, or rather programmer's convention, to promote 
their show, like they need more promotion, they say they're still taking in the entire Vegas experience and are amazed at how big the city keeps getting. And that's what everybody keeps saying. I just can't believe it. It's I been two years. I don't think people tire of coming to Vegas. Nope, they, not at all. They, if they need an excuse, they're here. They are. Well, folks, do you have plans for Super Bowl 35? Well, we'll show you what some local hotel and casinos have planned. And more importantly, what are you going to eat while watching the big game? Some interesting and simple Super Bowl menu items are coming up as well. And if you have the traveling bug, we'll show you the, one of the most popular destinations in the world. It's all next on News 3, where news comes first. Today at 4. I'm Kendall Tent. We've been watching Rick and Sandy Borba as they try to fulfill their dream of having children. Today, we're going to have an update as Sandy makes her last trip to the fertility clinic. That's on News 3 at 4. The Region Hotel and Casino has fumbled its financial future several times, but Super Bowl weekend could be the start of something new for the Summerlin Resort. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. Welcome back, everyone. This is it for two pro football teams this weekend. We'll decide who will be the Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. But the weekend is also big business for Las Vegas. Thousands of tourists come to town, bringing with them money to help boost mm -hmm. our economy. The party list is long, but there's one place really hoping to score big this weekend. That's the region in Summerlin. Kirkhoff joins us now from over there. And Kurt, a lot of things have changed over there. For someone who goes, uh, they'll see some different things. That's right. There is a new 24-hour coffee shop. And check this out. All right, this is a common sight. We have cabs lined up. You didn't used to be able to line up here, though. That has changed as well. Well, they're trying to accentuate the positive here, and to do that, they're pretty much shouting from the rooftops. Talk about having a lot on your plate. Overcoming tremendous financial difficulties. <laughs> Shuffling priorities. Enter Super Bowl weekend. Now that a $20 million security blanket is in place, this is the time to change course. It really, it will allow us to maintain our momentum. We've got tremendous momentum going right now. The Super Bowl party is aimed primarily at the locals. They are the ones who will make or break the region. The problem is we've never done a very good job of letting them know that. So uh, our job lately has been to let the locals know that we have outstanding value here. Going after the local market with a big Super Bowl party is one thing, but keep in mind, there is competition. It's definitely a challenge, but I think what we're starting to see, and from the Sun Coast, our neighbors, we're starting to see more people feeding into this area because they want to see the Sun Coast, and they'll also come to see the region. They'll see both properties. According to resort number crunchers, cash flow is 25 to 30 percent ahead of projections. But is the region proof a luxury hotel casino can't make it this far off of the strip? It's been a learning experience for many. You, you don't know step one, two, and three. You're kind of feeling your way along. How do you develop the business and how do you uh, uh, position and posture your business? Super Bowl Sunday, the video screens will be everywhere. High dollar memorabilia, things like autographed jerseys and helmets will be given away as prizes. Keeping score will have a whole new meaning around here come this Sunday. Of course, a quick monumental turnaround would be the ideal, but I kind of sense a more realistic outlook among the resort's top brass. If they can just capture the imagination of the folks in this neighborhood, they will be well on their way. Kurt Goff reporting live from Summerlin. Right back to you guys in the studio. All right, Kurt, thank you. What kind of food and entertainment can you expect when you go to these big Super Bowl parties at the resorts? In 20 minutes, we will show you what the Riviera Hotel and Casino has planned. And speaking of the Super Bowl, for the first time ever, you'll be able to make a bet on UNLV basketball and football games. Of course, that's UNR and all the state uh, colleges. That's because the Nevada Gaming Commission approved the new rule yesterday. Starting February 7th, that's actually the first game that UNR will be p uh, playing, you'll be able to make a bet on Nevada collegiate teams at any sports book. Football coach John Robinson, of course, of the UNLV uh, football team, talked with News 3 about yesterday's big announcement. And again, the big issue that we all face is fixing the games, the potential of game fixing. Uh, um, this rule or, or would not affect that at all, but every coach has has nightmares, really, about somebody coming and talking to a player or attempting to get information that might affect the game. 
There are some people in Congress who want to ban college betting altogether. Insiders tell us that bill could become law in March. Nevada lawmakers are fighting it. Proponents of the betting ban have criticized Nevada for not allowing betting on our own sports teams here. They claim if Nevada thinks college sports betting is acceptable, then why are we afraid to allow betting on local sports? Of course, by lifting this ban, the argument no longer applies. This Tuesday station, Casinos is going to officially take over the reserve in Henderson. The state Gaming Commission gave final approval for the $70 million deal yesterday. The commission says station's dominant position in the market catering to locals does not amount to a monopoly. The next time you go on vacation, how would you like to help outnumber the natives? It's happening in Singapore, and leaders there say they do not have many problems with the throngs of visitors because of some very strict rules. We will take you there coming up. Monday on News 3 at 5. Just how far will the internet go to cash in on your kids? They earn money, their parents give them money, and they're on the internet in droves. Teens spend a lot of money. And now a battle is raging between malls and the internet, dueling for your kids' business. News 3 anchor reporter Kendall Tenney digs deeper. Clicking and buying is easy, but does it save money or cost parents more in the end? Watch for Kids Only, Monday on News 3 at 5. Here I am. Talk about a travel success. Singapore has only 3 million people living there, but welcomes more than 6 million visitors every year. But many experienced travelers say Singapore is too tame to be considered the real Asia. Jason Howell shows us that's because the city state takes a hard line on many aspects of daily life. If you're looking for the exotic Orient, look elsewhere. In comparison to other parts of Asia, Singapore is very westernized. That's something that hits you immediately, from the big city skyline to how people dress. Then there's the matter of Singapore's reputation. Have a nice day, or else. Sometimes it seems there's a fine for almost everything here, but you can't argue with the results. This is perhaps Asia's cleanest, safest city. I think the rules and regulations exist to deter people from um, making the place uh, an undesirable and uncomfortable place for other people. But before you dismiss Singapore as a spick and span police state, take another look. For one thing, like anywhere else, you'll still see people doing what they shouldn't, like this guy sneaking a smoke. For another, food. You'll do some memorable eating here. American expat Laura Liu says that's the best part of living here. And each Sunday, uh, my husband and my daughter and I go out and try a new food. Uh, could be Indonesian one week, Korean the next. I mean, you have really uh, have a really nice variety of flavors. Indian in Little India, Chinese in Chinatown, Malay on Arab Street, all a product of Singapore's rich ethnic mix. A thumb boat ride on the Singapore River gives you a neck craning look at the new Singapore. And for a glimpse at the city's colonial past, you can't beat the Raffles Hotel. For more than 100 years, the Raffles Hotel symbolized British colonial rule in Singapore. But while you can still sip Singapore slings at the hotel bar that invented them, that's about the only thing that hasn't changed in this fast-moving city. But it is exactly Singapore's changing faces that make this place worth a visit. In Singapore, I'm Jason Howe. Singapore was founded in the early 1800s as a British trading colony. You can go for the shopping. Everything. I'll it's go just for beautiful. the food. Yeah. Yeah, you what would John go for? Go for? John, what do you think? Golf, maybe? <laughs> the three guesses and the first two don't count. <laughs> <laughs> the women. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's easy. <laughs> you know, I, and go ahead and slap, <laughs> slap those numbers up there. <clears throat> All right, 49 degrees, 34 percent. You know, there's a million songs about baseball, and I was thinking about this. How many songs are there about football? Can you think of a single um, one? The only uh, thing I can think of is that song, Backfield in Motion, and that really wasn't about football. <laughs> Remember that, Cliffy, that song? from the yeah. You're not old enough for that. Barometer, uh, 29.89 inches of mercury. All right, let's uh, ride up the river and over the top of the valley. We'll take our last check on some numbers. Light snow beginning to fall on our local mountains where we have a snow advisory. Uh, above 4,500 feet. That's just above our local foothills off to the west. 30 up on the mountain right now, and uh, we could get upwards of maybe, say, 5 to 10 inches of new snow at our local ski resort. Wonderful. 45 and light rain falling over the hump and perump. 54 down to the south in Laughlin. 56 over 10. 52 right now out at the Air Force Base. 
Mostly cloudy skies. In fact, cloud cover is just going to hang around. Showers already beginning to develop. We'll see that in the uh, Doppler radar in just a moment. And they're going to hang around. At times, shower activity could just be plain rainfall. And uh, the rain showers, the latest computer forecast models, folks, indicate the rain showers are going to kind of hang around on and off through at least tomorrow, and we could have some lingering isolated sun, uh, thunderstorms on Super Bowl Sunday. The winds are going to pick up as well. Winds have been calm so far, but they're going to pick up throughout the afternoon and the evening, although our air quality is good. We had one unhealthful reading of dust earlier today out at Apex. I think that's probably because of the wind. Other than that, we're okay. Uh, 56 yesterday, 39 this morning's low, just kind of split the difference between the normal high and the normal low. We're not doing too bad there. Sun sets this afternoon at 501, 646 is when it rises. If you're just now joining us, thanks for choosing News 3. We always appreciate that. Well, the checks in the mail. 52 showers down in Los Angeles. Windy conditions across the Rockies and the Plains. Snowy conditions across the Midwest. Uh, Chicago, about one to three inches of snow today. Beautiful across uh, Florida, although central Florida, drought conditions, brush fires, zero visibility on some of the roadways. And 63 with uh, going to be some rain in Phoenix, uh, but not uh, necessarily today, but over the weekend. Beautiful right now across the Northeast, but that will change as well. Channel 3 Doppler now beginning to show a larger band of moisture beginning to move toward the Las Vegas Valley. Right there, Spaghetti Bowl Interchange. There it is, my house. And uh, the uh, showers are light at this point. And once again, this is not a storm system that's going to provide a lot of rainfall all at once. However, it is colder in nature than the last one, and the snow levels will drop. And this is, once again, the best thing about this whole deal is snow at our local ski resort. 41 Caliente, 29 in Tonopah. So it might be a rather a super. <laughs> okay. Uh, showers tomorrow, and then a lingering thunderstorm possibly on Sunday. It was a stretch and a weak one at that, I admit it. The uh, winter storm watch is now a snow advisory above 4,500 feet, and temperature readings are not going to get out of the 30s over the weekend up on the mountain. It's going to get to be wet out on the water later on this afternoon. You boaters and uh, fisher people uh, just want to warn you, and you folks down in Laughlin expect some showers to develop by the afternoon and the evening. Uh, showers and wind and rain hanging around through tomorrow. Once again, an isolated thunderstorm possible for Super Bowl Sunday, but who cares? We're going to be inside watching the game. Finally, the answer to the Frederick's fact, this southern state's flag shows a woman trampling a man. Can you the picture? That would be uh, Virginia. And Virginia. as I mentioned, yeah, it seems to make sense, right? Virginia is sure. a common woman's okay. name. Yeah. It's uh, an, actually an Amazon warrior woman trampling on a tyrant. And the state's motto is Six Semper Tyrannis, thus always to tyrants. In other words, don't mess with us Virginia folks. There you the go. state song is Rod Stewart's Leave Virginia Alone. Absolutely. Yeah. Gary Sears, congratulations. His brother is staying at the Riviera this weekend. Really? Yes. So he and his oh, brother are going to go to the Riviera Super Bowl party. Perfect. And 115 Sometimes, bucks. 115 normally. bucks a piece. Sometimes a plan comes together. Very it does. nice. Right, very nice. Thank you very much, John. Speaking of the Super Bowl yeah. parties, food, well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Take this, a look. This weekend, uh, we're going to have some ideas for you because the folks from the RIV are here, and boy, have they brought us a spread. Wow. Check this out. We're going to be talking to the executive chef when we come back, folks. Welcome back, everyone. Coming up new today on First News 3 at 4. A three week ago, a rather old baby is murdered. The child's father, seen right here, is now in jail, arrested for the child's murder. And today at 4, why Nevada has the highest rate of child abuse of any state in the country. And it's one of the fastest growing diseases in the country, but an old drug is proving a new use in preventing it and getting money back from your airline, the passenger rights that you may not know about. That's all coming up today on First News 3 at 4. It's Super Bowl weekend, of course, and a lot of people are having Super Bowl parties and a lot of resorts as well. Sue is joined by the executive chef from the Riviera on what to serve for your party and what's going on at the Riv. Check, check it out. I just, I just love this, the tree here, <laughs> the palm tree. It is so cool. We're going to be talking about that too. The spread is amazing. This is executive chef Robert Gartz. He is, of course, from the Riviera. And if you go to the Riviera, this is what you can expect. This is just a small portion of it, isn't it, Robert? Basically, just a little taste of what, what we're going to do on Sunday for our invited guests and uh, others that, that attend the party. Um, 
A lot of fun. Always, always fun to get up for an event like fun, this. Fun, really. You guys probably have to get up extra early well, and work extra hard because how many people are you hosting that day? In the neighborhood of 3,000 people is what oh we'll my expect. Oh, gosh. And, and this is for the invited guest party, right? And then you've got an, another party. Uh, no, this is primarily invited guests oh, okay. as well as general public. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a ton of people. Now, is this a sampling of what everyone will get when they go? This is a, 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 a general general sampling. There are a few other things that we'll have out there, a few tricks up our sleeve. Um, and we like to try and focus primarily on the popular stadium style foods uh -huh. uh, to fit the theme of the game as well as the fact that that's what most people have in mind for an event right. like this. And so we just tried to take a lot of the, st the stadium favorites and embellish them up um, Riviera style. you got a lot of varieties yeah, we got here. A good mix. Okay, let's kind of start a little bit and just keep sure. going forward. Sure. Rib, um, these ribs. are these are barbecued ribs, Ooh. barbecued baby back ribs. Mm -hmm. Always a favorite anywhere you go. Oh so, yeah. Um, we have a nice mix of sandwiches Plenty here. Plenty sandwiches. Meatball parmesan, uh, cheesesteak hoagie, mm -hmm. Italian sausage and pepper hoagie. Mm -hmm. um, a mix of uh, assorted um, cold uh, f um, lunch meats, uh, corned beef, roast beef. Um, over here we have some tacos, Ooh, hard shell tacos. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, up front here we have some like uh, appetizer fixings, uh, chicken wings, chicken fingers, uh, oriental vegetable spring rolls. Um, Check out if, you, if, if you're like me and like to eat dessert first <laughs> because I can never make it to the dessert after I've eaten my meal. Check out this huge cake. Of course, you've got the Giants and the Ravens sure, in there we try and to the theme guys it. playing the game. I have to give kudos to my pastry chef, Tommy Martinez, who's been at the Riviera for oh, many years my and gosh. comes up with these nice little doodads. And uh, it's, a, it's actually interesting to see those who can weed through all this and actually make it to the dessert <laughs> table. It's, uh, it's quite a feat to get there. But Robert, food's not the only thing that folks can expect when they go. What else is going on at your Super Bowl party? Well, we're fortunate enough to have some uh, former NFL stars, Roman Gabriel, Gail Sayers, Ben Davidson. Um, so that's always a big thing for the for the people to be able to touch some of the, the uh, retired players oh, that yes. were popular players in their day. And uh, some entertainment going on. Yeah, too? we have some entertainment. We have a marching band that's going to come Whoa. in and play some play some music. And um, gotta we have, have cheerleaders. Cheerleaders, there you absolutely. Go. Uh -huh. Have some cheerleaders. Uh, George Starsenic uh, basically PR sets man. up a lot of the uh, entertainment Big activities George. there. And uh, of course, we'll have uh, a race and sports book available for anybody who would like to make a wager on the game while, uh -huh. uh, while things are taking place. The party is in the Royal Pavilion uh -huh. at the Riviera Hotel. And um, the doors open at 1.30. The doors open and at 1.30. And the game doesn't start until what, 3.30 is it? 3.15, 3.30 in so, that neighborhood. So you can pig out for a couple of hours yeah, before the game even starts. Certainly what we're expecting. And, oh uh, my gosh, mm -hmm. that is amazing. Good luck to you and your staff. I know you have a lot of uh, work to do to get ready for all this stuff. We don't want to forget some pizzas and other desserts Absolutely. and more sandwiches and pies. And thank you so much for coming thank here. Everybody has me. been eyeing this bread since you guys brought it in. <laughs> well, we brought some goodies to leave with all you. All so right. You can thank you so much thank for coming for in me. today. Good luck with the Riviera. Thank you. Scotty? All right. Thank you very much, Sue. So let's talk about some of the other parties because. What happens if the Riviera is sold out and everybody wants to go there and you're left out in the dark? Well, there are some other places. The Aladdin Theater, big screen TVs, doors open at 1 o'clock. Tickets are $15 for the Aladdin. There's the phone number. Just in case you don't have a pen, you can't write all of these numbers down the information, you can go to our website at kvbc.com and uh, we have all of the information there, the numbers, the prices, and the times. Las Vegas Hilton. In the Hilton Center, cash price giveaways. A lot of folks are giving away prizes at their parties. Doors open at 1230. Tickets are $49 to go to the Hilton's Super Bowl party. Moving on to another big party in town, the Luxor Theater. Prize drawings as well. Doors open at 1 o'clock. This is at the Luxor again, $24.95. The game will be on a 30 by 60 foot screen. Similar to the size of John's uh, television, right, Johnny? Yes. The big screen, yes. And uh, stadium-style food, uh, drawings for prizes, and the showgirls from Midnight Fantasy will be there for the party. And again, uh, that's at the uh, Luxor. Main Street Station, tickets are $50 for that. 777 Restaurant and Brewery, pick a square pool, 387-1896. Again, that is the party at Main Street Station, $50. You can see the prices vary uh, from place to place. Suncoast is actually going to have two different parties inside the Sun Coast. There's the Grand Ballroom, big screen TVs, 10 $1,000 drawings at the Sun Coast. Tickets though, $35, not a bad payoff. And uh, again, the game will be shown on five large screen televisions. And uh, again, if you would like to access any more 
uh, of the information about the Super Bowl parties, you can just go to our website, kvbc.com, and find all of the information. But don't forget about the Riviera, folks. Again, this Check party this starts out. You couldn't, st you couldn't stay over there on the set, could you? I had to come <laughs> over. While I was reading, I just said, hey, let's just come over and deal with the food. Some of my favorites down there already had some, Robert. I you didn't even that. notice I, I stole well, some. It out to me. Yeah, they have chocolate-covered strawberries, I just too. want the chocolate helmet. You want the helmet? There's a couple of them. So go for it. Let me ask you this. Is, is there a limit as to how many? Obviously, there's a maximum, but do you anticipate being sold out before you get we to We certainly point? expect to be at the maximum, and um, I am certainly well prepared to handle the maximum flow. And uh, for everybody, have a good time and enjoy it. There's a lot of spirit, and so it's, wow. it's a yeah. fun event. Like we said, a lot of folks come to Las Vegas. They like coming here instead of actually going to the Super Bowl game because there's just so much going on here. And once the game is over there, you just have to go home. Here, the yeah. party goes on and, and on, on and on. on. Yes, it does. Have a great weekend, everybody. All right, we'll see you then.